I am thinking of something very much related. Edit object geometry, add a smoothing modifier. That is what I'm thinking of. Uh, the, so deformer is a node that you set up and then you can pull or push geometry. It's often cumbersome to use in DAS Studio. I tend to not do that. I tend to use these effects in external modeling applications and then just bring in that uh, as a morph. So it's, it's essentially a poor man's way of putting a dimple somewhere or putting an influence onto an object, changing the geometry in some way. There's something cooler, and this is what I wanted to show you really. It's the smoothing modifier. It's kind of related. If I apply this to my couch here now, we see that nothing is really happening, which is kind of cool. Uh, but under mesh smoothing up here, it takes something that is a collision item. And this collision item can be literally anything that you want. So in my case, let me use the actual character. So I go and pick my Genesis female character for this as a collision item. And I'm not going to do anything at the moment. It doesn't really show anything. But as I move my playhead, it will start colliding with this object. And the smoothing modifier is going to go to work and introduce this little dimple underneath her bottom. And currently it looks a little bit crumpled, but it creates that indentation that I was talking about. Depends if I move her into it too much, it won't look too great. So you can see that the couch is kind of making ways to climb up on her. We don't really want to do that. So I might go and on the last frame of the animation, I might just go and move her up a little bit, let the um, smoothing modifier do the rest. So the other thing I can do now is add a few more iterations here. I maybe make it 10. That might make it better. And that creates that indentation underneath my character. So if I go and make my character invisible, this looks much more realistic, like an actual couch now, where somebody's sitting on. You can do this manually as well, but the cool thing is, if I do this with Das Studio, and since it's a dynamic effect, if I were to move my character, be it visible or not, if I go and move her over here, the indentation is going to be at a different position. So this is kind of a cool way of making sure your objects react. So if somebody's lying in the bed or whatever, this is what things could look like. Kind of awesome. Now, the problem is if you use a trick like that, DeForce isn't going to know that this thing is going to bend unless the character actually hits it. So what could happen is if we run the simulation again, the clothing is still going to kind of dig in. So there's clever ways around it. You can go and take this object now that it's morphed out and import it again as a morph like I showed you earlier. And then this becomes essentially a slider at this point. So you can add that to your scene and add a bit of extra realism to it. Let's go and we'll see what happens when we bring our character back and we bring our clothing back. And we'll just see if DeForce is happy with it in this current shape or form. So look, we're actually extremely lucky. DeForce is behaving seriously, seriously nice today. So it does that indentation from the character, not from the clothing. And it seems to be working extremely well today. That is very cool. Usually I'd have to resort to a lot more trickery. This is kind of the reverse of what usually happens with me and sitting animations. Very nice. So we're extremely lucky today. You can use both of these tricks in conjunction.